Um, thank you so much for joining us. I know, like James said, for some people, this is a busy, busy time. Um, for myself, it's busy, period. This life is just busy. So I get it. I get it. But so glad you took the time to, to pop on with us tonight. So I just have a few, this is like a really intense um, element. So I just have a few notes that I kind of pulled real quick um, for you. And I'm sure you're going to have way more to say than what I do. But this element number 23 is master your thoughts and emotions. So from this one, we're, this element is going to help us to determine our readiness to step into a conscious path. Then we'll move from a state of ego or self-orientation to one of being more social and in service to mankind. So from me to we. So we learn how to create a window of tolerance that will allow you to maintain internal stability despite what the world throws at you. So in this element, again, we're going to be going to a mental gym. Uh, we've talked before in a physical gym, but we're going to be going to mentally work out. Um, explore the role of our emotions and learn to manage and master how they can be channeled to help us create optimal health and well-being. So that's what we're talking about. So we probably remember we went over element number four and we talked about um, whether we were above the line or below the line. And we know that um, you can be above and below many times. I mean, you shift around all the time. But what does it mean to be above the line? So uh, just a review, above the line thinking is going to be open, you're curious, you're ready to grow, um, you have a changing mind, you know, you're willing to change um, and move along, you know, new things come to, to thought. And um, you learn from this and growth mindset. Um, and when you something happens, you, you're always saying, how does this apply to me? Rather than, oh my goodness, I don't need this. So it's just a whole different um, thinking. And it, usually you appreciate um, opportunities that come around for you. And then below the line thinking is gonna be where you're saying, oh my goodness, everybody is wrong. Um, I'm not at fault, it's everybody else's fault. And as far as maybe um, if you want to bring it down to our our eating program, a below the line thinking would be that you, you know, maybe you just can't stay in salad. I can't do the program. I can't do salad, you know, so it's below the line thinking. Um, and or you might even thought tonight, you're like, oh, my goodness, do I want to be on this call? Do I really feel like it? Ugh, I don't have time for that. What did you think to yourself? Let me jump on for a minute and see what I might gather from for myself from this call, then hopefully you get something of value. So on page 467, another thing that we reviewed in element four is revisited again. So if you look at 467, you have a little picture there and we learn about how our brain is 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 made up. So the first thing we have is our lizard brain. So that's our stimulus and it's like a uh, it's like automatic it if you think of a lizard um when they are startled that they like run like everything scares them and they're like skittish they're from here to here to here and that's the part of our brain that kind of works like that um it's automatic then we have our labrador um part of our brain which is our emotional response and it's immediate kind of like a little dog and like a big dog like a big old dog even a little dog, I guess. But anyway, a dog. Um, it doesn't, it like always wants to be loved and it wants attention. And so it's got the love of family and food, um, it wants to connect to its emotions. And so that can get us in trouble, for example, when we're at a party and we think we gotta have the cake because we gotta have the cake because we love the cake, first of all. And not only do we love the cake, but we love Aunt Susie who made the cake. So we gotta have the cake, you know? It's kind of like that part of our brain, that's how it works. And if we can get past that, if we can stop for a minute and allow ourselves to respond correctly, we'll get to that human part of our brain. And from there is where our willpower comes. It's where our higher thinking comes. Um, if we let our response go all the way up to the human brain, then we make our best decisions. And if we don't stop and take the time to respond, then we're gonna end up in the Labrador um, jumping around doing crazy stuff 
or we're going to end up in the the lizard where we just so quick and we make a decision too fast and it's usually not the best decision so let's think about it um what do you do what do i do when you are in an emotional situation when you're feeling that emotions in yourself so there's a list i didn't write down the page but there's a list of emotions um things that we do when we're in an emotional scenario so do we overeat um are we the type that's, that sleeps a lot are we drinking too much maybe taking drugs that happens are we controlling are we exercising are we cleaning are we gossiping are we shopping watching tv scrolling nonstop on the phone scrolling 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 when you don't want to feel the emotions you do this and not all of it's bad um the thing is though we're buffering and you're drifting below the line because we're going into a state of numbing ourselves out Sometimes um, it can be really destructive, again, like overeating or over drinking and definitely doing drugs. That could be bad. But maybe it's just exercising, which is good, but maybe it's exercising to excess just to numb out. That's the bad part. So the key is that we want to become aware of where we are. Remember, we're working on habits and we're working on being intentional. That's our whole game changer to make um the changes that we want overall in our life so you can do any of these things that was on the list that i gave you it's just where where you are when you're doing it and um how much are you doing it and um just being a, in the moment i guess is the word i'm trying to say so on page 459 there was a paragraph that i i noted it says, as you reflect on how you've grown, learned, and instilled new habits, recognize that your transformation is underway. Your growing self-awareness is powerful. It's a powerful tool because without it, we have a tendency to contract with fear. It has been said that we have almost 70,000 thoughts during a day, and most of them are the same thoughts that we had yesterday. Often they are difficult or negative and critical of ourselves and others. So it's so important that we are aware of where we are. So here's a cool thing. It's a little exercise. So when we're going through situations and maybe we had a situation ourselves um, today, maybe today was a stressful day, or maybe we've heard some bad news. Uh, maybe we've had a death recently or I don't know, it could be so many things that um, can touch us and cause us to go into an emotional state. So here's, here's the little, here's the little exercise. So when you feel that emotion, whatever that emotion is that you have right now, go ahead and actually locate it and allow yourself to feel it. And then once you've located it and feel it, almost reach in and touch it. So you own it. So in the YouTube, I saw the uh, pod, the, not the podcast, the YouTube on Element 23, um, the person, the uh, coach that was giving her um, experience, her story, it was really sad. She had had a, a stillborn baby. So she was talking about her grief. So she located that grief, really owned it. And then the next thing that we're told to do is to describe it. So when we're in that situation, we're feeling those emotions, locate it, accept it, describe it. How's it making you feel? Do you feel inside like you're clenching it? Is it clenching your body? Is it pinching your body? Are you feel tightening? Is there a pounding in your chest? Is it oppressing or expanding? What is it that we're feeling? Go ahead and own that. And then the next thing is to shift with it. We talk about shifting all the time, but let's shift with that emotion as well. So the way that we do that is we accept our emotion. You know, we, we locate it, 
we feel it, we describe it, and then let's breathe with it. Just accept that it's there and then just breathe. And you might have to take a few deep breaths, but allow yourself just to own it. You're not trying to get rid of it. You're just trying to engage it. And then notice how your whole body feels and acknowledge it and let your thoughts pass without fighting it. Just accept it. And again, it's several deep breaths that you want to take. Remember that energy from those breaths is, in, is going to help you balance the emotion. And once you do that, then think about how you feel again. Allow it to just be there. Just be with it, whatever it is you're feeling. And then you know what? The next thing we want to do is learn from it. If we're going through sadness, um, then we don't want to, we don't want to um, toss it out or, or let it go. We want to allow ourselves to mourn and it's okay to mourn. Sometimes we just need to be aware of that too. Um, you hear people say it's okay to cry. It's okay. Own it, own the sadness, mourn with it and allow yourself time to heal with that. And you might not heal completely, but when you accept it, you'll be able to manage it. If it's anger, oh, what is it that you need to, to, to stop? What is it that's causing the anger? What needs to be changed? What needs to end? Figure that out. But work on that. Work on what you can do to handle the situation. Is it fear? Is it really something to be fearful of? Or is it what we've perceived in our brain? Because sometimes we can make up stories in our brain is it a real fear? Figure that out. Sometimes it's, um, we can make up these whole stories of people. For example, you think somebody doesn't like you, you say, she doesn't like me. I know it's how she looked at me. She looked at me funny. And you get this whole little story about how this person don't like you. And then you feel like I can't, I can't, I can't go to the party because that person's not going to want me to be there because they don't like me. And so is that really real? Or is that something you made up in your mind? So really owning on understanding if it's a real thing or if it's a made up thing, that's important. Understand that fear. And remember this exercise that we're learning, it's not for you to let things go because really you just need to process it. There's a quote um, at the end of the um, YouTube that I heard. It says, between stimulus and response, between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response, to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. I thought that was pretty cool because that pretty much sums it up. And that is all I have. I hope that was valuable to you. And I'd like to hear if anyone else got anything from this chapter. Again, I mean, element, there is so much there. I would love to hear you. Anybody, anybody? Anybody, anybody? <laughs> is Jamie raising her hand or is she laughing at me? I can't tell. Okay, go, Jamie. <laughs> I can't even find where my little raise hand icon is here. <laughs> so I'm going to raise him. Um, I jumped in late, but it's so powerful what you were saying about how really <clears throat> embracing these feelings and knowing that it is okay to be feeling this way um, and allowing yourself, recognizing it, addressing it. And I think that so many times that we tell ourselves, we can't be like this, we can't do this, we can't act like this. And that is what then causes us to try to suppress things and then causes that build up. So it, it is okay to cry. It is okay to be sad about something, but not allowing it to take over you. Understand it, learn to control it and channel it. And that is where we then, like you said, we have that growth. And that is uh, very powerful. Um, not something that I have mastered at all, but that I am 
working on still because that is one of those things that's that's challenging and it's a great thing to do to help us to grow um emotionally spiritually and uh mentally thank you jamie that is so true i think we're all a work in progress how about that and we have barbara Okay, so I enjoyed, um, well, I enjoyed all of it, but on page 455, right up top, where it says the world around us is volatile, uncertain, and becoming more complex. And the only way that we can assure our continued well-being is if we have the flexibility and the resilience to adapt to changing conditions. But if we're too rigid and we get, and we get stuck, and as the condition change, we rely on the past to guide us. It causes it leads us to frustration and temptations to avoid these issues. So um, one thing I learned um, in the past few months, and I've been, and I live by that, is that regarding responses, um, before I would have a response, a verbal response to something that people would say to me, and the only thing it did was just tear me up inside. So now my response is no response at all. I, I gave you my response. I don't respond. And depending on the where I am and the environment, I walk away. You know, I walk away. It's like that, that, what, that was my response. Whatever you're saying, that was my response. So I'm learning to work on that emotion of mine because I know with me, I, can, I will cut you up and spit you out. I know that. You know, so, but I recognize that about myself. You know, so once I know that and I said that out loud, this is what you know you can do, especially for somebody I know. I will go deep. And whatever it is I know about you, I can go deep and tear you up. And I know that because Jehovah, <laughs> he allowed me to see that during the situation over the summer. So I was like, whoa, that was deep. So he's telling me to work on it. So for me, it's just before you even get there with that emotional, because you're just going up and down the emotional roller coaster, is not to respond and to walk away. And it's not holding anger in. It's not doing none of that. But I responded to you. <laughs> you know, so that's what, that's one of the things I even have a post-it. I took it, I printed it out. It was a poem I print out and I put it in a frame and I have it sitting on my table and daily I may pass by it and I'll read it. I know where it is if I need it, you know, so um, that's one of the things that has helped me. And, but really what helped me is being on the program and having the book because it's, it's, it was teaching me, you know, so like you said, it's a shift, it's an awakening and I really um, appreciate it because it even helps me to serve um, Jehovah better because now it's an awakening, things I didn't know before. What is transforming your mind? Everything, now the puzzle is, is fitting better because that puzzle has gotten so small, those pieces have gotten so small and now I see the gaps. So now I can close it up. So I really, I really like it. It's helped me. Thank you, Barbara. I think it's so true, just living intentionally um making a decision of how you're going to re how you're going to handle things ahead of time and um then like Jamie was saying this um allowing yourself to feel an emotion you know you it, it is what it is I remember Dr. Aids always telling us to to take a moment and have a sip of water because that gives you a minute to like think what your reaction is going to be and not just to blow it off and just go into these ranting rages or even even fear or, you know, just take a moment and think, think about it. It was excellent. We were getting excellent training it goes along with my spiritual excellent training. And I absolutely love everything. Go ahead, James. Yeah, so good. Oh, man. Um, remind me to stay on Barbara's good side. Woo. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Mama Barbara. I love you. <laughs> So uh, so good. I, I, I love I love this element. One of my favorite elements in in the life book. I, I mean, I I love the program, and I think that's why I decided to become a coach and why I've been doing this for five and a half years. And something like this element um, really attracted me because it was so much more than weight loss. And this is why a guy like me, who you know, when I started this five and a half years ago most people would have looked at me and thought, James don't need to lose any weight. And I didn't come into this for weight loss. Um, we, we were talking about, you know, a lot of us come into this for healthy body because we want to get healthy physically, lose some weight, come off medication. Now we're talking a lot about healthy, um, healthy mind 
And as Barbara mentioned, transforming our mind. Um, that was one of the reasons why I started this. But in Optavia, we have a trilogy. That third one is, is healthy finances. And that was actually the reason why I decided to become a coach and did and, and, and do the program and lose 20 pounds and then start learning about all this. But it's so much more than just weight loss. Um, and for um, on 460, it talked about when most people think of health, they only think of, of the body. They only think of the body. But up to this element, we're, we're actually almost done with this life book. And it's so cool that on this community call, we've gone through I think this is our third time going through this life book together as a group. Um, but as we've gone through this life book, we've addressed pretty much every aspect of health. And it's not just our body. We've talked about, we have talked about the physical health. We focused, we started off with focusing on reaching a healthy weight and how to maintain it and how to install great eating habits. Um, and then how to fuel your body. We've, we've learned, we've talked about that through, throughout this life book. Um, it talks about we have dressed, we've addressed motion and exercise and how you can become a perpetual motion machine and to keep up with both your body and your brain. Uh, we've, we focus and we've talked about sleep and why sleep is important when it comes to reaching optimal health. Uh, let's see, also the importance of minimizing self-judgment. We talked about inflammation in our body, um, how we can conduct ourselves in a compassionate way, you know, to be just be more fulfilled at our jobs and our careers. Whatever, whatever we do, just have more passion. Uh, all, all of these different things. So when we think about put all of this together and what we've discussed and what we've learned through this life book, it, it really has set us up to uh to, to live an optimal, healthy life. And this is why I love this program. And I decided to coach it. And I've been doing this for so long is because it's so much bigger than just weight loss. Yeah, we can show people how to get healthy, how to lose some weight. But when we really apply ourselves and really start applying the healthy body, the healthy mind, the third trilogy, why I did this is the healthy finances. And it's completely got me healthy there. Um, but when we apply all of these things, we see how, why so many people are, are living optimal, healthy lives in all areas. So that oh, was my, my guy was in charge. Was <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all I wanted to share. Well, thank you, James. I appreciate that. <laughs> Anybody else have anything else they want to say? Anything, anything you want to share a win or anything cool that happened? I got my 10,000 steps in. I'm pretty excited about that. Actually, I did more than 10,000. I can't remember what it was now. I posted it, but I'm super excited. Barbara? Well, I must admit that um, I put on some weight while I was in Hawaii and um, more than I ever did since I started the program, but I was still under 170. But I jumped on it right away. And um, first I had to get mentally straightened out because that was like, what the world? And I knew I didn't want to go backwards. I was like, oh, uh, this ain't happening. You know, so anyway, you know, I started back. I said, okay, I need to go back on the program. And even though I never did the five and one, I had to go and do this five and one. I said, I'm going to do this five and one for a minute. And I got my, my food and stuff together and I started adding my um my my motion. So that and I've been showing my videos. And I know you saw Carol because you was, you know, so I've been showing my videos and um I did my bike last night, stationary bike. I finally jumped on. I haven't been on it in a while. I look at it, but I like walking and stuff like that. The 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 stationary bike is a um that's a rough one for me. For me. Because I was never an um, athletic type of person anyway. I never was. I didn't ride the bike. My sisters and brothers did. I didn't do stuff like that. I get, let me dance. That's what That was me. And I love to walk. So uh, last night was my first time getting back on the bike. I did my 15 minutes. And believe me, that was rough for me. But I needed the endurance. And I, and I said, I'm just going to do it. I was huffing and puffing like you think I was riding for two hours. Shoot. I was like, oh, Lord. And so, <laughs> and so 
Yeah, you know, but then I said, well, I was videotaping myself. I need to be consistent. So therefore, tonight, back in the room, back on my bike, 15 minutes, I will videotape that. Then I took my walk because um, if anybody saw my video this morning, then I, I had a doctor's appointment, but I thought it was today, but it's tomorrow. So I'm quickly, uh, so I ended up, I said, oh, well, I was close by Costco. So my coach told me that I need to go. Why don't you go to the park and go walking? You know, I'm not that part. I'm not going to no park early in the morning by myself to go walking. But I said, hmm, Costco's is right down the street. So I'm going to take, I'm going to do my steps. I'm going to do my steps at Costco. I stepped right over there to the clothing department and got all my sales and walked around. I did a video walking around. I'm doing my steps with my cart right up to the cash register. And my coach said, that's not the type of steps I was talking about. So I got disciplined on that. <laughs> so I said, okay, so I got to, <laughs> I had to go and do my walking. And that's when we was talking. You saw me take my, my walk longer than I thought. Actually, I took, uh, I walked 12 blocks. So anyway, th that's what I'm working on right now. And I even saw James doing his too. He was lifting the weight. I was like, go James, you know, go, you go. Do. So anyway, you know, so now. Learn. Coach, hmm? <laughs> I need me a coach. Can I, can I buy a coach? Oh, ooh, James. Okay, anyway. <laughs> I forgot that. <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm impressed. But, but that was it. So that's my goal. And I even took a picture of my weight. But what I weighed on it is I got the picture. I'm not playing. I'm not playing. I, I never want to go back. Never. And even though it was under 10 pounds, I was, I was stressed out. Like, what happened? Well, you know, I know what happened. I was at in Hawaii eating... Banana bread. But anyway, um, that's the end of my story. <laughs> You're not alone. I, I picked up, I'm going to say, four pounds. I forgot now. But I'm working on it. At least we know the program. We know it works. So we got this. Viv Viviana? You have a comment, yeah. my friend? There we go. Yeah. Hey, Carol. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Well, I can be your coach, number one. Yay, there come we on. go. Be my coach. <laughs> I need a coach. Yeah, I can be a coach. Um, all right, gonna give you a good wing right here. Uh, I truly, truly, truly has started this program because it was the mindset. I am huge believer that everything we do is because our mindset. Number one, everything from there, everything goes by. Um, I'm gonna give myself a really good win because. I'm not only like, I'm a pranayama teacher. So I've been practicing every single morning, get up at six in the morning and do all my breath work every single morning. And it really helps me so much to set up my day. So if it's something that Dr. A is teaching us is to be embrace the mindset. So to embrace the mindset is to get up in the morning, get up and put these ideas, what are gonna be like so grateful for the rest of the day. And that's what I've been doing so much. So I truly appreciate it with everything you touched today because you touched, you talked too much about the breath. And uh, as a breath facilitator, it's it, it just to be into, in tune with your own breath and feel the emotions. It doesn't really matter what emotions it is. It can be emotions of happiness or anger or frustration, just to allow yourself to be into that breath, into that emotion and feeling it. What is there? Why the motion is there? And just breathe into and let it first experience. Let it yell. Let it, let it scream. Let it be happy. Let it be laugh. Whatever it is, and just let it pass. And just keep going with your day. So for me, the mindset is the most important part for anything that we do in our life. And this is amazing. This is amazing. Our program our program works. Yes, we all gonna lose weight. That's great. But let's go and focus in the mindset that is gonna take us to live a very healthy life. And Carol, everything that you share today, every single thing that you say, I like, yeah, you got it. I love it. And I love it that our clients can be into like, yeah, let's go into the mindset because that's number one to keep going with the rest. So thank you so much for sharing today. And as my wing, yes, I've been practicing every single morning. I don't know if you know my uh, face, my Instagram, but that's what I've been doing. 
every single morning, can be for 15 minutes to one hour. I don't know, it depends on the day it is. But guys, take time to just sit down, breathe in and out and feel the emotions and let it come those emotions and whatever it is, just, just, just feel it and go and embrace it and then just go with your day. So thank you so much for today. I, I do really love and enjoy this, this element. That's all I have to say. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Appreciate oh, all your thank, thank, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> all right, James, I think we're at our hour. Yes. Yeah, we are at the hour. Just one announcement I want to share, Carol, for everybody. Um, I'm sure if you, your coach, or, or you probably seen it if you're in the, in our support group, but just wanted to remind and remind everyone that uh, our community is amazing. And that's one of the things I, uh, one of the components I love about our, our program is community support. And we have so much support, trainings, guidance, accountability that's available for us if we if we just uh, if we if we attach ourselves to it and, and use it, so I, I'm gonna share my screen because I just want to share this one thing. If you guys don't know about it, every day, pretty much every day, we have a, um, a a win community call. It's very similar to this call that we're doing, but they're happening daily and they're only 15 minutes. 15 minutes a day, Monday, Monday through Saturday at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Saturday. And then there's one in the evenings at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that one's only Monday through Friday. Again, they're only 15 minutes. They do highlight. They In 15 minutes, they're going to share stories, transformations. They also highlight an element in the life book. So it's very similar to this call, but you have something available to you every single day. Um, so because this is your journey, this is your transformation, this is your health, you have the choice on which calls you want to get on and how many calls you want to get on. If you can only get on once, then and that's and that suits you, then you can only do it once. If you're someone that needs daily support and accountability in addition to your coach and you like these type of community calls, they're available for you every single day. So I just wanted to make sure mention that and let you guys know those are available and they're amazing. I, I, I get on those. I encourage my clients to get on. And as you just get a daily dose of inspiration, motivation, just a little bit of something that's going to keep you going day to day. OK, um, so that's it. Just wanted to mention that and share that. Uh, thank you guys all for being on this evening and uh, we'll see you guys. Everybody have a great week. Have a great weekend. And we'll see you all next week. Carol, thanks again for jumping on and leading us in this discussion tonight. You did amazing. Everyone that shared your comments was incredible. Thank you. And those for, for just being here, we thank you. And we'll see you guys all next week. Have a good night. Thank you all. Good night.